hope you're well. I am very well here and I am very happy to announce that our intake for January is open. I want to equip you with the right skills. In the field of highway design, I want you to be the best. And of course, before then, we can be able to do one little thing today to make us a little more productive, to make our work a little easier because the work of an engineering demands a lot. That's why the softwares and tools come to help us, to save us actually. But for them to save you then, you actually need to understand how to use them. So yesterday we were able to understand how the quantity takeoff criteria works in Civo 3D. And today, of course, I want us now to go deep and get actually to execute the function of generating quantities, right? So one key thing that you need to know is what, what, at what stage should you start generating quantities? So you start generating quantities after you've built your corridor, right? So once you've built or you've modeled your corridor, you need to create sample lines. So basically sample lines are what you can see here on my screen, what I've selected now, it's SL. And then of course, after that, you can create them from here uh, under, under the home tab, uh, then profile and section views tab. And then there is the second icon, which is sample lines. That's where you create them. And uh, uh, sample lines just cut sections at user specified stations along an alignment. And now they help us now to calculate the quantities, right? To compute the right one. So you will also need to have something called corridor surfaces. So that's what I'm going to show you now. So the first thing is you select your corridor. And once you have your corridor, then you can go to, there's this contextual ribbon that pops. Then you can go to corridor properties. And once you go to corridor properties, then you can scout or check. This is the information. These are the parameters, of course. Uh, this is where you have your horizontal alignment, vertical alignment, the assembly. This is called the baseline, which follows the alignment and the vertical alignment. Of course, horizontal and vertical. This is now the region which has your assembly. Remember, you can insert your assembly, as many assemblies, assemblies as you want. That's not the topic for today. The topic for today is surfaces. So what does surfaces have to do with quantity takeoff? What you need to understand is the method that the software uses, or rather the software uses surfaces to triangulate and compute your, uh, it uses thin surfaces to triangulate and compute your quantities at intervals that are specified by your sample lines, physically. Yeah, that's a layman's language of explaining this. So you must have surfaces. And what are these surfaces? So the surfaces are, you must have two surfaces, two corridor surfaces. You need to know that these are corridor surfaces. So the first one is you need to have a top that is showing the FRL, the finished road level of your project, and datum, which is the bottommost part. So you remember yesterday we talked about a datum uh, and a base, you know, a base, a comparison surface and all of that. You can recap that in our video. So let's create that. You just click this icon, which is basically where you create a corridor surface. And once you create it, you call it top, right? So that way you've just created that surface. But remember, this is an empty surface. So you need to add data into this surface. So how do you add data? You go to data types and because we don't want to add feature lines, you can add feature lines, but it, it means you're going to add a single feature line at a time. But in this case, let's add links. The links are what is already in the, in the assembly. And then here you can see now you have all of this specifying code. And in this one, I want us to add, because this one is top, we add top here. We select the top and then we add it to this icon. Remember, you have to add it as a break line for us to add data into our surface. And then suppose you've probably selected something wrong, you can always delete with this. And then we repeat the same thing for our data. 
so I call this Hiram uh, array and then links of course and then you select datum here so it's datum then you get to add we add this as a break, uh, break line again during triangulation sometimes you find that there are elevations that could be very close and since this is more of an automated action sometimes it can confuse between datum and top surface so it's good to have top links that's called overhang uh, correction and then for proper triangulation and then of course bottom links here and once you do that there is another icon which is more of boundaries you find that this is not a surface for the entire section sometimes it can triangulate outside the corridor so you want to restrict it you want to give it boundaries for it to be restricted uh, within the extent of your corridor right because this is corridor surfaces so just select top you right click and you have options to add this one so you can add this way you can add automatically by selecting uh, the the link that you want these links are based uh, for these they are sourced from your assembly and then of course there is all of these you can add from a sample line you see like this one now it's it's taken me to select something directly from the assembly okay so but in this case i just want to add the corridor uh corridor extends as outer boundary so this means my surface will be restricted to the corridor so once you do that you need to allow the software to rebuild the corridor for it to reflect those changes the reason is because corridor modeling is such an intense um, function in civil 3d so that's why you need to give it time sometimes and also you need to rebuild the corridor for it to update so if you don't update it's going to calculate it's not going to show surfaces if you don't rebuild it's not going to show surfaces and that means now it will not also be able to calculate your quantities right so up to that point we're good so the next thing that i want us to do is now to go and compute our quantities or the quantities for our project and when we are calculating the quantities for our project this is based on sample line so we have two options and uh one of the first option uh okay my computer is glitching because it's computing this it's a long project so just be patient a little patient with it so when we are computing materials or quantities is we have two options the first one is we can use the sample lines all right or we can use the analyze tab here so those are the two main options that we have but the end result is the same just uh, the only difference is just a little uh, variations uh, but let's get to do that it's going to be wrong mm -hmm. so let's start with the sample line so the first thing is we select the sample line and oh sorry the corridor was selected so we select the sample line and once we select the sample line there's a contextual ribbon that pops so this contextual ribbon is to help us probably if you want to add labels if you want to visualize if you want to modify that is edit sample lines uh sample more resources so in sample more resources it's probably look here when we talk of sampling more resources it means that for example if i proceeded to calculate quantities i would get a nil in this case why would i get a nil for example you can see from uh these are the sampled resources and these are the available resources so for example the available resources here are the corridor surfaces so i've created the corridor surfaces now but they have not been sampled by the sample lines why because they had previously created the sample lines so in this case sometimes in as much as the software is dynamic uh, it means that sometimes it may not be able to select or rather to sample all the resources and so in this case you need to check that so in this case the surfaces have not been sampled so i just select it and add to be sampled and this one and add the same thing if you want to remove something that you don't want it to be sampled then you can be able to do the same so i just get to apply uh, so that means uh, my section has been sampled and then get to apply and then once i apply that i say okay so 
my resources have been sampled. Everything, the corridor surface has been sampled. So the, the sample lines now have been able to know this is my top surface and this is my data. All right. So after that, now uh, we'll go to the next uh, stage. And the next stage is now being able to compute, actually compute uh, these quantities. So in computing these quantities, uh, we have to create the materials list. You remember what we explored yesterday. So the first thing is we select the sample line, of course. And once we select the sample line, we have this contextual ribbon that is here. So we use these items at launch pan. So in the large pad, this is where we are able to have the options. We have three main options, which is number one, to compute materials, to generate a volumes report. So you compute first, and after that, then you're able to generate a volumes report. And then after that, you're able to create a mass hall diagram. So for today, we are going to compute. So you select compute. And in materials computation, there are two main element that the sample line is going to ask you for is the first one is this alignment so this is my main alignment suppose i hand many i will be able to select if i want to select directly from the diagram i can also click this green icon or box and then you select the other one is sample line group and remember you can have as many alignments as possible and also as many sample lines as possible so i press ok and then it takes us to this table the volumes computation table and in this com volumes computation table uh, there is uh, this one cut and fill so this is what was existing in my diagram but in this case I want to delete it just so that you may be able to actually create one with you and so for you it will look like this if you're not creating before so what we do is we want, it uses average. I want you to look here. Volume calculation method, it uses average end area. There is the prismoidal and composite volume, but it uses the average area method. And then of course the data type, there are two data types. So we use surfaces for earthworks, and then we use corridor shapes when we are calculating pavement materials, we'll get to that. Uh, of course, we can add sub criteria. We can always add a sub criteria. So this means we can add a small item. For example, if we are having other works and we want to add stripping in that section, then we'll add that as a sub criteria. We are going to do that. And in this case, of course, you're going to select the surface that you want to do. All right. So then there is import criteria method. So when we talk of import criteria method, it's going to select from the quantity takeoff that I was showing you yesterday. So when you select, you can see we have the three options that we end in the previous video. So this is a uh, cut and fill. That's what I want us to calculate now and then press OK. Once you have that, there is this now pop up where you want to specify. So you're giving it data in this case right so you can see there is uh, the sample line group uh, you can see the object uh, the method of calculation and then there is surfaces i told you that uh, this method uses surfaces and the first one of course uh, which is the base uh, is the existing crowd and then the comparison is the data and then if you end corridor shapes, you can as well add, but not necessary for this case. So we press OK. In this case, we can rename these to cut fields. All right. And then uh, with that, if you expand, you can see the existing crowd. And anything above the datum is then considered as a cut. And then a fill is anything above the existing crowd. And then once we apply, it's computing and then press OK. So in that case, it has been able to compute our, uh, our materials that we require for cut and fields.